Hey there, this is Kyle and Travis with Beyond Bipolar Blog. So I know it's been a very, very long time since we ended up loading a blog, so we apologize for that. How long has it been, Travis? Maybe a month or two months? Maybe probably since July, so. Oh wow, so it's been that long. But anyway, we're going to Chicago right now. Uh, just give me a second. As you can see, we're going to Chicago. We're in the car and we're driving there. So we got a good four hours left. I don't know if you can really see that. But anyway, that's what we're doing now. And I guess I just want to do uh, an update of things that I've been going through. I just decided not to speak about it, but I feel like now that things are actually going ready, I am ready to speak about it. So let me switch it back. And I apologize for the weird angle but this is the only way we can do it of what we could sit. But anyway, I guess about this trip, I was actually pretty stressed out about it because my dad is, you could call it disabled. He broke his back. He's been on disability for a long time and he pretty much needs my brother and I to help around the house. I'm actually pretty lucky that my brother is my brother because he does a lot of the work at home. So I wasn't sure how my dad would feel, but he, after we told them about it, things are okay. I was actually pretty stressed out uh, because for some reason I knew dad would kind of complain about something and he was complaining about the tires. And the good thing though is we were gonna go to Walmart and sorry to call out Walmart and Hastings, but the autos is just terrible because we've been going there for the past three times and every time we went they're closed and today's Friday and they didn't even give us a courtesy call to call us back. Granted, it's a little earlier and maybe it's a really horrible place to live or mean to work. So they ain't getting paid. I guess I could see why they don't want to show up, but still it kind of wasted a lot of our time. But anyway, we got we had to go to Tires Plus and Hastings and they were able to do it. Walmart was originally going to charge 150 and with these tires, it was 250. So we had to go up. Uh, my dad said he'll cover a part of it so i guess we just went with that so our tires are good uh we actually had to fill up the oil in this thing too and this car is getting old it's a sky in 2013 and uh the motor's kind of conking out on us so we had to put oil in it too but anyway that's what we're doing now so i guess we uh, the topic i really wanted to talk about that part of it was the stress with my dad trying to balance a relationship try to balance my family kind of stuff it's always been that uh, push and pull right now I'm not going to say much about it but we've been going to have a court case coming up I'm not going to talk about specifics but it's been a little bit of stress on me too because my dad's been kind of pestering me about it trying to get things going right now he's been pretty cordial about it I think things are more in our favor to be honest anyway but that was part of the stress too but the real topic I really want to talk about is obviously some of you know I've already been in a relationship. I've been in still in a relationship. It's almost our six month anniversary, uh, the 16th. Uh, it seems like every month we tend to have some sort of uh, back and forth. And I think maybe we break up makeup quite a bit, but for the most part, I feel like we get along pretty well. Uh, there's some things we kind of scuffle with, but the thing is, for the most part, we talk about it. But the main thing I really wanted to talk about is like one of our probably our worst fights was about this guy. Or I'll just say two anonymous people that were kind of involved with a friend that I knew quite well. I won't name names, but he's basically been in... Uh, He's been out of prison for a while now and is ba based due to uh, a case, a pretty severe case that happened 20 years ago. And long story short, people said things, some some other uh, person in the adoptee circle said things. And I got pretty offended because for the most part, when we we're working with my friend, I feel like he's been nothing but kind, nice. He's been uh, working a job that actually works with people that have rehabilitated. And to me, I feel like he's proved that he's reformed. And 
uh, this ties with mental health and, and adopt adoption because I feel like a lot of adoptees struggle with emotional control and obviously he did struggle with it and uh, it kind of tied in with my personal life because the person that was trying to take this person down uh, it was basically tied to him and the person that was tied with him was tied with another person which was tied then tied to my my girlfriend which kind of got things pretty strained because whether it was me that was probably inciting more issues that I felt like even though she wasn't like she was supporting the other side but in the, in the end I wasn't down with it maybe it was me that had the, the real issue too and that's why I actually thought I was just going to break it off because I felt like I shouldn't have to make her choose me over him or her or whatever. It's kind of hard to speak about these without giving specifics or names. I don't want to give names as people might be going against me. But anyway, it goes a little deeper too because uh, since this is kind of a more known case, I mean, you could look it up online and anyway, and it pretty much shows. And I wanted to say that the court case doesn't exactly explain all the details it only gives one of the perspectives yes uh sexual cases do need to be taken seriously and a lot of women have been uh abused and traumatized and that should always be listened to but at the same time if a person that has proven to reform and change his ways i think it's very unfair for a person to take someone down when they actually this is what I hate about society. They always make judgments without trying to get to know the person first. And that's what kind of has been irking me about it. And I especially, even though a lot of criminals have a difficulty reforming, there is that select few. And the reason why I truly believe in reformation and, and I truly believe that even though humans do struggle, that's a given. And I do feel like if they have proven by getting their act together pretty much and staying out of trouble and actually helping a bunch of people. I mean, hell, this place that we're going through, it reminds me of when I dated my previous ex and we're and going to Winona and, and in the end, he was the one who actually went all the way down there to pick her ass up. That was like two hours far. And it wasn't just her, he helped, he helped a, a ton of people. I mean, I consider him my friend because we actually been helping him too with his, his job. And thank God when that person called uh, his workplace that uh, uh, the, 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 his employer was like backing up 100%. And what I found is speaking to him at a church that there's actually a lot of other people that support him. And I think why it affected me so much is that even though my brother and I never been in jail, thank God, I guess, but there's actually a part of me that feels like maybe we could have been because with our mental health issues, we were pretty out of control, especially my brother. And I was out of control because of, of him. And if we didn't have a, a family to stay with, if we didn't have uh, an adoptive family to give us like shelter we probably would have end up in jail seriously I, I really truly believe that and it makes me f freaking sad because when i think about it and i see people attacking my buddy who i feel like he's actually really strong his point of view is in the end people won't change he's not going to avoid certain social circles he knows who he is which is good and honestly it probably affected me a lot more than him but I imagine myself as him and I imagine myself being attacked. And in the end, although for the most part, I'm kind of hard headed too. I, in the end, I, I tend to not give a shit, but there's just a certain threshold where there's, you only could take so much. And I imagine myself taking that kind of social media abuse or bullying, if you want to call it that, that I, hell, I actually might've wanted to kill myself to be honest. And I've been pretty down about it. It affected not just my relationship but it just affects i have a huge heart whether people think i'm actually supporting a abuser or someone that should be uh 
pain the rest of his life. But then there's another question. How the, how long should someone pay for their crimes? And how long can someone actually make amends? And when is that point? Which is another topic in Excel. And the, another person brought up the fact that I need to talk to the victim. I don't know. I've, I don't have any access to the, to the victim. I would be more than willing to listen and hear her side of the perspective of the story. But right now I seen what is in front of me and my buddy. And for the most part, I feel like he's been living a pretty normal life. I mean, he just goes to work 40 hours. I mean, uh, he has a relationship and it's just fine. He's living like, hell, I actually think sometimes he actually lives a better and more moral life than some people that actually haven't been to jail. I mean, I think he's a better dude than me at this point. But I just imagine, I truly believe with Beyond Bipolar blog and with the dicks, even though I lose my cool, even though I, I get really irritated by it, I do know that every journey is their own but I truly believe in second chances. And according to the Bible, people say it's not just second chance, it's third chances, fourth chances. That's what, what Jesus would do. And I know people would say, you're just using God to protect a abuser or whatever, or a bad person. But in the end, I think being bad and good is, is up to perspective. Some person can have bad qualities, some person, people can have good. Maybe in the end, there's no such thing as good or bad people. But anyway, this is kind of the shindig what I've been going through and I wanted to tell and hopefully we're not like starting like a whole fire about this, but we want to make a call out and send out that everyone, everyone does deserve forgiveness, but only if they're willing to put in the work for it. And obviously my buddy has, and that's why I got so flustered and I wanted to support him, even if it kind of uh, burned some bridges with some people but for the most part people I think support them so in the end it doesn't really matter um yeah Trav was there anything else that you want to add about this this topic about forgiveness and uh addict people that are going through their own journey and what do you think about people and and, and judgment and what kind of message would you like to give to the viewers I just think in general it's just People always have mental health issues, whether you are formally diagnosed with a label or not. And some people just suffer from so much trauma that they believe that they're basically doing the right thing by tearing someone down because they almost feel entitled by being better than them. I think the one thing about our friend is that he performed. I mean, the case is something that should not be forgiven. I understand that. And to my point is that maybe it shouldn't be forgiven, but at the same time, it's probably better to look forward and see what has changed for the better. And for this friend of ours, he's changed. He's become more moral. He attends church on a weekly basis. Uh, he's doing good things for the community, especially in the prison world. Uh, I think one of the most important things about him is that he has changed and done things for the better. And a lot of that is not only good for him, but it's good for our mental health because we realize that he's supporting people with issues like maybe that are cases outside of law have issues with mental health and he's willing to support people at a point where Colin and I just cannot tolerate it. He's willing to go the extra mile to really put forth that some people in spite their dire situation, in spite not willing to change, He's still having the benefit of the doubt that maybe someday that they will and they always need support regardless of whether or not people believe they are just kind of enabling such a behavior. I think the one thing when it comes to mental health in general, since this is a mental health channel, is that it's more important to listen than actually speak. There's something in the Bible that says, be quick to listen, but slow to speak. And I think that is very true because we actually learned that last, I mean, I attend a Korean church. I don't know what the heck the language is. I may know some letters here and there, or I know the alphabet, but it did specifically say that be quick to listen and slow to speak because generally many people do the opposite where they are quick to speak and s slow 
to listen. Not I'll be only honest, that. we do that too. And the irony is the apostle that actually wrote that is King James, the name of my dad. So I thought that was just the irony because definitely Travis and I do struggle with our short tempers. Yep, go ahead. So I think that that is one thing that humans in general need to learn, even though you may or may not be religious or whatever you call it or Christian or whatever or believe in some other form. I think there is some natural advice that generally people should live to to live a better life and i think that another problem is that people have a tendency to hold on grudges and are quick to anger and that is very problematic because it just it just intensifies and it lights gas to the fire that's already there it puts gasoline to the fire that's already there and it's best to kind of just urge surf something that's in dialectical behavioral therapy is to just feel the moment, try to breathe a bit, and then maybe look at the situation on a later date. And I even for me, that's been hard in the past, but I've learned to adapt, establish more wisdom, been on medication that has kind of slowed my temper now and has actually chilled me a little bit. But at the same time, I feel that in spite of all that, there are life lessons that the Bible can give you and slow to anger, quick to listen, slow to, slow to speak is very important when it comes to general human behavior that we can apply to. And I, I think for the most part, the journey on this, the experience that people need to learn, the wisdom that people need to learn on this channel is that people can change people are willing to listen promoting mental health reducing stigma or eliminating stigma talking about medications talking about our experiences on medications talking about our daily life regarding mental health this is what the channel is about and in spite of i mean i only have like 562 subscribers as of today but it's been a long journey i think maybe Two years ago, we, were, we just reached 100. So I'm really thankful to be able to help the people that do listen to our channel. I just want to send a thank you back. And I appreciate you guys listening. Speaking about change, do you feel like you and I changed a bit, especially compared to the earlier Beyond Bipolar blogs that we used to, to have? What's your opinion on that, Travis? And do you feel like we probably could have been in, in jail if we didn't have a good family or... There's another moral of the story that deep down in the end, when you look at a person, whether you're rich or poor, whether you have a job or not, whether you're a criminal or not, you could still be that person. You're like, we had this chat uh, with our, another friend where it could just be that wrong time, wrong moment where someone just loses it. They're cool and they end up making their life for the worse. And as humans, we're always gonna make mistakes. It's not good to permanently harm other people especially what like this my friend did, but I think he's definitely learned a hard lesson and became, honestly, through a bad time, he became a better person. And sometimes there's this story where bad time, where bad times take, create good people and good times create bad people. So sometimes you just have to live and learn. And I think at this point, I just want to fucking move on. No matter about how much it actually made me upset about it i think what made me content is number one i feel like the most important part my buddy didn't lose his job he's fine his life is pretty much normal and i hear that this person just continuously just wants to keep taking him down and he still wants to continue going to the social groups which is great too and in the end it's just not going to stop him so in the end if he's okay then i should be okay too and even though i do put myself in his shoes and I very well could have been that person and if I was getting bullied I probably would have maybe could have killed myself because in the end the whole point of life is you have to believe in hope you have to have faith you have to believe in the better if not then then what's the fucking point there's no point I know we made a lot of videos that saying life is meaning meaningless I want to die but I mean just look how beautiful life is if you just open around i mean look at that that beautiful mountain up there that's 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 incredible 
I don't know if I could go up, but it's just incredible. Look at the some of the scenes. And I think it's just beautiful. Sometimes you just gotta open your eyes, take a breather, relax, and just try not to get so bitter that you hate your fellow man. And it's important not to do that, even though I make we made jokes about it. I mean, my dad, my brother still makes jokes, even though my dad sometimes gives us our time. He just makes jokes about him dying and, and having, <laughs> we, we bought a body bag and I put myself in a body bag. We make jokes about it and it's like Halloween and stuff, but it's good to laugh. But we also want to point out that this channel truly believes in honesty, which, honesty, which is great too. And But we also believe in change and transformation and hope for the better. Is there anything else you want yeah, to add? Yeah, I just want to say that everyone experiences trauma, but the most important thing is try to learn from it. Uh, this can stem into addictions like drugs, alcohol, abuse, whether you are sexually, emotionally, physically abused, or you do that to someone, all that stems from trauma. And the most important thing on, on our channel is how to positively deal with it, how to take that and maybe transmute it into something that is more positive and that's what the channel is about we do have a lot of negative ones because we want to share every experience on our channel not just the positive but i think the most important thing as we grow is that we want to have a healthy channel in which we do promote mental health and that's really important and regarding addictions we do not judge even my brother's girlfriend has a sex addiction and <laughs> well, that's just totally a joke just joking but anyways that's a sex that's addiction should shit. be sex addictions still need to be looked at and i'm sure met many of people believe it i wanted to talk about something too i actually pretty much for the most part stopped porn i mean but it's kind of cheating when you can have sex with someone sex is always better than porn so i can't blame people that need to get get off and release but i actually feel like when you're in a relationship yeah you need to have moderation otherwise you lose the you lose it down there if you do it too much you're not going to feel much and so i, I had a, that experience so. so i have a tendency to have really really dry humor but for the most part i think humor can really lighten the low if there's some negativity brewing uh she's try not to offend people reason. in a negative way but at the same time being light of certain things can really help deal with depression but I, I wanted to ask you, so, and I'll say three things. What are three ways do you feel like you changed from the years ago of those those videos that we used to load? Can you explain like things that you change or things that I improved? think the most important thing is learning to adapt. And the most important thing that had helped me was not denying medication, was not believing that it's wrong, but actually trying keep trying i've been i tried 30 different medication and despite all the negative side effects i have found one that has worked even as early as this last month where i did make a change from latuda capilita we'll do another review later or if you have already seen it i just want you guys to know that you know medications is an option that should not be something that's thrown away number two is to develop the maturity and wisdom and de personal development when it comes to life-changing events whether it's mental health group therapy individual therapy family marital support whatever you need to better your life i think that's another improvement that you need to think of and the last thing that you guys need to learn is I think the most important is to have the experience and learn from it. But another thing is to help support others that maybe be struggling right now and learn to listen, try not to make too many judgments. This world is full of quick judgments and that's something that is not healthy, can make mental health worse, not only for them, but for the individual. Some people feel entitled that they feel that because they're a better person, they need to destroy the people that are bad. You know, some people do learn, some people do adapt. I believe there's something when in the Bible that used to be an eye for Saul, an eye. And then he was really bad, but then became a good person and became Paul. So I think a lot of that 
transformation or transmutation is very important. Something simple as like carbon or whatever it can be turned to diamond if you only learn to experience, adapt, and help other people that are in need. That's it. Are you proud of your journey and, and how Beyond My Polar Blog changed? And, and are you or? I think the most problematic thing is that our videos are not always high quality. The sit setting of being in a car is not necessarily the best situation. Most people with highly high subscribers usually have a, have a very, very clean atmosphere, <coughs> a very good camera, very good lighting, an area that is looking pretty spacious and clean. For us, none of our channels have known that. I think since our channel is everywhere regarding everything, and it's not pinpointing certain things. That could be the reason why we're not experiencing as many subscribers as I want. I do want to reach a bigger audience, but I also don't want to take or get rid of the authenticity of being in the moment of some of our videos. Because being authentic is more important than having the professionalism to almost look the part. We just want to be authentic, be honest, be trusting, have an audience that has an understanding, forgiveness, non-judgments. I think that's the most important thing. I also wanted to add a few things that, like I said, I'm ready to move the fuck on. Deep down, the person involved, he's fine. Nothing really changed, although it was really dramatic. Maybe I was making it more dramatic than it was because I was projecting my own insecurities about it. But in the end, people will say what they're going to say. They say that even though it's hard, you have to learn how to control your reactions. If you actually end up reacting to everything, you have no control, which I understand is hard. Some of us are still even going through that. Even I am. I wouldn't say I'm totally transformed. I wouldn't say I'm totally the highest version of myself yet, but I think I'm still working hard to get there. It's You sometimes don't see the, the fruit of your labor until much later, and you can't see what the journey is unless you actually be brave and take the steps in the sand. So we want to end this message on a very high note. We wish you a lot of all as much blessings as possible and hope and that no matter how much you try, never give up. If you give up, it's okay. Sometimes you just need to take a breather. So sit down, relax, meditate, and don't think too hard about it because in the end, Sometimes you're just meant to keep trying and just pace yourself. It's not a race. Like right now, we're still going four hours left to Chicago and we're just patient, enjoying the nice scenery. But I think this is a really good video. Is there anything else you want to add, Trav? Nope, that's it. All right, guys, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the bell button for future updates. And we only wish the best to you. And I also want to make an apology apology to everyone else that felt like there that felt like I was in the wrong and they were in the wrong. But in the end, I have pity because I guess I can imagine myself in their shoes, and they're so bitter, so broken that all they can do is just take other people down, hurt people, hurt other people. That's just the fact of human nature. It's not an excuse, but it's understandable. But anyway, hang in there, you guys. We're going to have a fun time in Chicago. All right, see ya. Bye.